First, we multiply this by five days of autonomy, which gives us 31,250 watts. Now let's factor in our battery DOD or depth of drain. To simplify the process of properly sizing a battery bank for an inverter or solar system, this video is divided into two segments. First, we look at things such as battery depth of discharge or DOD, inverter efficiency, days of autonomy, and the amount of loads to have on the inverter. Thereafter, we will use these factors to properly determine our battery size. To calculate the size of battery to power your home, you have to figure out 1. Battery depth of discharge or drain, which is the amount of battery charge that you can use. It varies from one technology to another. For a lithium battery, you can get a DOD of 80% to 90% or 0.8 to 0.9. We will work with 80% as well as 0.8 efficiency to be on the safe side. 2. Inverter efficiency. Most of the appliances in our homes use AC current. Thus, we need an inverter to convert the DC current from a battery to AC current so we can power these appliances. This conversion creates some energy loss, which must be factored and used for sizing our battery bank. A decent inverter such as the pure sine wave type from brands like Eve Eva, Vicron and Schneider can offer up to 90% or 0.9 efficiency. 3. Days of autonomy. The number of days your inverter system can run and sustain without charging it, 2-3 to three days is considered as the standard for battery sizing. But if you're here in Nigeria and you're not tied to the 24 hour grid, Consider increasing your days of autonomy to 5 days or even 1 week. Sometimes you can have a total blackout for days or even weeks. 4. Amount of load you want to put on your battery or inverter system also comes pretty handy for properly sizing your battery bank. Here is a comprehensive table of what a simple load audit and calculation looks like. As you can see, we've got devices. So these are the list of devices we will be putting on the inverter system or perhaps our, our battery. And this is the number of each of the devices that we have on this list. And the number of hours for which we will run these devices. Then we have the power rating which is measured in watts for uh, each of the devices that we have on the list. And we will multiply this by the number of devices and also by the number of hours that we will want to have these devices on our inverter system on a daily basis. You always have uh, devices rated in power and when you check sticker or labels on your devices you see the energy rating probably in current arms or in watts power. So when you see in current you take the voltage of your device and multiply it by its current to get its watts or its power rating. So the way you do that is, let's say we have a device that is rated, a device that is rated 0.5 amps, and the device uh, uses 120 volts or 110 volts. So we take 110 volts and multiply it by 0.5 amps. So that gives us 60 watts. So this is how you calculate the power rating of a device in watts. And for our laptop, it's rated 65 watts. And we multiply 65 watts by the number of hours we will run this device on our inverter or solar system, which gives us 650 watts. We've got three ceiling fans, each rated 80 watts, which if we multiply by the three fans, we got 240 watts. So if we multiply 240 watts by the 15 hours, we'll have these uh, fans on our inverter system, we get 3,600 watts or 3.6 uh, kilowatts. So we have a television rated 60 watts and we want to run this uh, guy for 5 hours. If we multiply 60 by 5, we get 300 watts. And here is a refrigerator rated 150 watts, which if we multiply by the 8 hours, we want to run it on our system, we get 1,200 watts. Then we have uh, bulbs, five bulbs, and each is rated uh, 10 watts. Each is rated 10 watts. So if we take the 10 watts and we multiply it by the uh, five number of uh, bulbs, 
we get 50. And if we multiply 50 by the number of hours that we want to run our bulbs, we get 500 watts. And uh, the total sum of the power or load that we will have on our system per day is 6,250 watts. Now that we have these uh, details, we can move on to factor in our depth of discharge for our battery, inverter efficiency, and days of autonomy to properly figure out the size of battery for our setup. Our total energy requirement per day is 6,250 watts. First, we multiply this by 5 days of autonomy, which gives us 31,250 watts approximately, as a close to 32 kilowatts. Now let's factor in our battery DOD or depth of drain. So we divide 31,250 watts by 0 0.8 battery DOD, which gives us 39,000 watts. Next, we take 39,000 watts and divide it by our inverter efficiency of 0 0.9, which gives us 43,333 watts approximately. So we need a battery this size to meet our energy requirement going by our load calculation and days of autonomy on our table. Now let's move on to figure out our battery size in ampere hours. Thus, we will consider the voltage of our energy system. For a battery this size we are considering, we will go for at least 96 volts energy system, which means we will go for a 96 volt battery and a 96 volt inverter since the battery voltage must be the same as the inverter voltage. Now that we have the voltage for our energy system, we can divide the battery capacity of 43,333 watts by 96 volts to get the battery size in current as well as ampere hours. So 43,333 watts divided by 96 volt gives us 451 ampere hours. You can't get 451 ampere hours. So you need 96 volts, 460 ampere hour battery to power the load we have on the table for the given number of hours and days of autonomy. Renewable energy is all about sustainability and efficiency. And to achieve that, sometimes you have to downsize or perhaps replace some power hungry appliances in your home with relatively energy saving uh, ones or alternatives. And here in Nigeria, I often have customers asking me, can I put my entire home, my air conditioners, my refrigerators, my pressing irons, television, and so on and so on, on my inverter and solar system? And I'm talking about customers who go for uh, small to moderate size uh, inverter or solar systems that are not really designed to power these things. Uh, you know, I always advise them to downsize or perhaps... Uh, you know, consider replacing some of the appliances in their home to reduce their energy footprint or energy need per day. Uh, I once have a customer who had a pretty small system and she wanted to go for, uh, she wanted to have uh, five ceiling fans, each taking about 80 to 100 watts on her inverter system. And I told her to uh, perhaps consider replacing the fans with the DC uh, ones or alternatives, which will take five times less the energy that the normal ones will take. And she was like, the cost that was going to add to the cost of, uh, or to the overall cost of setting up the system, uh, that was because she was considering the uh, short-term cost implication. Uh, besides, setting up uh, an inverter or solar system to power relatively power-hungry devices in your home will require getting a big battery. So you have a short and long-term cost implications of having uh, power-hungry electronics on your, on your inverter or solar system. I think much of this can be blamed on the fact that we don't use proper metering systems in Nigeria. So people go out there and they buy, you know, they buy electronics that take a lot of current and they fill their homes with these electronics. When it's time to go solar, it becomes difficult because these things don't work quite well with solar systems. So uh, consider always uh, going for sustainable uh, 
appliances or appliances which have energy saving uh, capabilities. That brings us to the end of this video. If you like it, like it. And if you dislike it, like it anyway. See you in the next video and bye for now. And one thing I forgot to add, having uh, power hungry appliances in your home also adds to the amount of carbon footprint in your living uh, space. And that's not very good for human habitation.